why don't you go ahead and just uh, brief everybody about what happened uh, two days ago? Yeah, so uh, I woke up to a million text messages and phone calls. I had no idea what was going on. So there was a, a lot of information out there and the story keeps flipping. So I'm going to stick to what is a, I know that um, hasn't been refuted. Let's just put it that way, okay? So there was a radical kid, 15 to 16 years old. He, during a live stream of Mar Maddie's, uh, Mar Maddie Emanuel is a bishop in Australia from the ancient church of the East. And he was giving a sermon. Uh, it was there Monday night in Australia. He gets attacked live on the, the live stream that they always have every single sermon. And he had a flip blade, spring loaded, didn't open up as he, you know, stuck it. it where it, if you watch the video, it's very gruesome. It's, it's, it's horrible to watch. I don't recommend people to watch it, but if you're curious, you're going to find it regardless. If you see where he strikes the first couple of times, he aims for the neck and the face, okay? The knife doesn't open. And so that's just a divine intervention in itself. You don't believe in God at that point. I don't know what to tell you, right? So um, knife doesn't open at that time. Men and women rush up to the altar, to the lectern to stop the incident from happening. Uh, then the knife opens, cuts a couple of people, people. One of the priests, Father Isaac, gets stabbed. I believe three to four people went to the hospital. And then from there, um, it was noted that Marmati was in stable condition, not life-threatening injuries. So, you know, luckily this, this didn't end as bad as it could have. You know, it's still awful regardless. But um, the situation could have been so much worse if the knife actually opened. And, you know, we you probably wouldn't have been here with us today. And so um, I know Marmati is a very controversial figure to many people. Um, but when I sat with him and I spoke to him, he came off as a person who genuinely loved Christ and God and believes what he's saying and teaching. You know, a lot of people call him a blasphemist, an historian, all these things, right? And um, to me, it doesn't matter. There's another person out there in the world talking that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the light. And I love that message. You know, bro, just a few headlines, man. The fact that this blade, because I mean, clearly based on the video, if you guys see the video, the video is obviously very gruesome. It's very difficult to watch. Uh, a lot of news outlets. By the way, this is getting coverage on every news outlet. Every news mm -hmm. outlet is covering this. Every story is covering this. You know, obviously this is like a buzz headline, you know, uh, you know, we'll get to it, but a lot of the headlines are like Muslim attacks Christian, yeah. right? That's that, that's like the narrative, but I'll put a pin in that for now. But uh, if you do watch the video, um, it is gruesome. And for those of you who've seen it, you see him go to stab the neck, the face. He is trying to kill the bishop, clearly. The blade does not open. And that is just such a miraculous event and it made me very emotional yeah it made me very emotional bro i cried i cried when i heard this and then i also cried when the bishop put his hand over his assailant's head and he prayed he prayed, that's, prayed for him that's saint like he prayed for him you know and all you know you know i'm 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 looking at what people are responding to. Obviously, people should be angry. People should feel sad. They should feel hurt. I totally get it. But what I just want to flag right now is that I'm seeing a lot of people, like someone just mentioned in the chat, they said that guy should not have made it out of that church alive. And uh, referring to the assailant, referring to this, uh, this terrorist who tried to uh, murder the bishop, that is, that, that is not Christianity. Mm. Christianity is what the bishop did, put his hand over his head, and prayed that God heal this man from his sick devil nature. This kid, his religious denomination, I believe they have confirmed that he's a Muslim kid and that he's, you know, he basically went to kill the bishop for things that he said about Islam and about the Prophet Muhammad. This kid is not a representation of his religion. He is not a representation of his religion. The same way that people would say that Catholic priests who were acting flagrant are representatives of Christianity, they are not. The same way that people say that Zionists are a reflection of Judaism, they are not. These people are, are actually hijacking their religion. 
that I, I know a lot of Muslims. No Muslim has ever condoned, the ones that I know have ever condoned, yeah, you should kill somebody for believing in something different than you. I've never heard any of these things. This, is, this framework is demonic, actually. And there's a lot of people who follow Islam that actually reject this, and most of them would reject this. Maybe some Wahhabi Muslims, like someone, there's a voice note that's being passed around of someone speaking with an Australian accent uh claiming that supporting this act of violence and this is being passed around as if this is a representation of islam and it is not and it is not and it should not not be so we are angry and people are obviously saying a lot of their feelings and a lot of people are saying you know we should turn we shouldn't turn the other cheek they're saying this thing that christians have practiced which is the teaching of Jesus, which is turn the other cheek, love your neighbor, love your enemy. And now people are saying, nah, bro, forget that. That is not what we should do. We should stop be doing this. We should, we should retaliate. What are we gonna, like, what does this mean? What retaliation, what, like start a war? Christians, we should what, pick up knives and guns and start murdering people? Like this is, th- this act, this is not, not the act. Like if anything, what this act has did, this failed attempt, has made people even stronger Christians, made people want to listen to what the bishop had to say even more, watch his videos even more, see how he's trying to spread the teachings of Jesus Christ and to follow God even more. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I I just want to just point point that out. It's like, it, it is obviously we're all very angry. We're all heated and people are, people want justice. And bro, I pray justice happens. I pray that this, this murderer never gets out of jail. I, I pray that God gives this demon the punishment that he deserves. Mm-hmm. And I pray that wherever this person who tried to kill the bishop, this person, wherever they go, I hope that they find God. I hope that they really find Christ and they realize the fault of their actions. And they do realize how wrong it is. And more and more people come closer together, actually. So that's just something that I, it was just really bothering me. Like people are like really posting like, you know, images of this kid and they're trying to say, oh, this is the religion of peace. No, this Mm -hmm. is the religion of terrorism. Mm -hmm. You know, this kid is a terrorist. He is a terrorist. The religion he's following, he's actually not following any religion. I don't think. I think this guy's looking for any reason to just cause cause pain, which is what Satan does. Well, so, yeah. And so, but here's the unfortunate truth of the matter, Paul, with that. As human beings, like you said earlier, the Catholic Church got a bad rap all these years for child molestation and rape, right? You know, it wasn't every single priest, but that's the rap now that every single com- comedian on stage will make that joke back in the early 2000s. That was just the rap that the Catholic Church got. And that's the reality of human beings, where as soon as something happens, a stigma sticks then that's going to be attached to the whole entire group forever. But we have to look at the facts, man. I mean, unfortunately, that one bad apple caught in and it didn't resolve any issues. It actually served the pot even worse, like you're saying. And and it gave, um, you know, this big group a really bad rap. Uh, But here, let me preface this by saying this. My best friends in high school were Muslim. We actually were part of a group called Brown Town because we were all brown kids. It was like 30 of us. And I and another kid were the only Catholics in that group. So I was a friend group with a whole bunch of Muslim kids. They were my best friends. We would go play basketball every single week. And uh, we were on the same high school basketball teams together. You know, and I don't think a man should pay for the sins of his father. Mm. Okay. So mm. if I made, it says it in the Bible, if I met a Kurd or if I met a modern Ottoman or whatever, right after the Syrian Armenian genocide, and if he was the son of a person who committed the genocide, listen, you're not going to pay the son the sins of your father. I'm going to, the same way where minorities feel a certain type of way against law enforcement in America, they're going to be cautious, but they might, they, they might not hate them. I'm going to have that stereotype associated with them forever because you did something to my people, okay? But the fact of the matter is you didn't do anything personally to me and you probably don't condemn those actions and you probably will never do those things to me it's that extreme group but we have to also look at isis and we also have to look at the things that they've done to displace the syrians and all these other people in the middle east as recent as 2015 you know and then all of a sudden last month what do we hear we heard the moscow bombing in the theater and then isis claimed it killing over 100 and it was 140 people that died 
So those extremist groups are still around giving the religion a bad rap. And it's the, the, the question is then if it's extremist groups that are causing all this pain and suffering, how do you stop extremism? How is it that, why are Christians always targeted by extremists? You know, why are these the issues? How do you solve those issues? Cause we can sit here and say it shouldn't happen all day and night. And I agree with you. There's nothing to argue about that. But the only issue is how do you get those people who commit those actions and then tie it to a religion for justification? How do you stop that from happening? Man, I wish I had the answer to that question. You know, like I, I think people have been debating this for years. You know, Christians have been targets. You know, we saw it obviously with ISIS. You know, we see, uh, you know, every religion have been targets at some point. We see the, uh, the Jews were targets during the Holocaust. We see the, you know, Muslims being targeted now with the genocide happening in Palestine. So it's like, you know, uh, all religions have had eras of being targeted, whether, in, and obviously we're talking about this specific era about Christians. How do we, how do we prevent it, man? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I'll tell you this. I don't think a way to prevent it is to listen to Andrew Tate and like li listen to an Andrew Tate video and Andrew Tate, who's someone who left the church, you know, is saying, I applaud anger from the Christians. Christians should be mad, which I agree. Yeah, we should be mad. And then him saying like, you know, I just don't feel like we should be incited to retaliate and hurt anybody. I don't think that's going to solve anything. Like if anything, this incident, we should be saying, thank you, God. Thank you. You saved the bishop. Mm -hmm. That's the power. That's the power. Of, that's the power of God. As, as much as you know, people would not want to hear this. It's like when we truly leave things in God's hands, it's all God's timing. I mean, the bishop was saved, bro. This miraculous act, this kid who was clearly determined to murder the bishop, failed murder attempt. Mm -hmm. This blade didn't open. God saved him. Yeah. I mean, people on the other side would be saying, well, why did God even allow the situation to occur if he's real? Right? Man, I mean, honestly, it's like, look, what, what are we going to do? We're going to start having metal detectors out in, in the church? Well, that causes like, a serious conversation now. It, it, it is, I think it is that serious. I think we've gone to that point now because I even reached out to my church. I won't say the name of it for whatever reason, but you know, I think now we, our churches should have these things in place. We should have security. We should have, you know, able-bodied young men. We live in America, you know, in the West it's a certain situation where Australia, they're not allowed to have the second amendment and carry guns like we do over here in America. But I think that able-bodied young men should be on constant control, and, and especially in places where there, there's elderly and young children and women who attend these areas. Now you unfortunately can't sit comfortable within a church now. That's just the reality of, of these, yeah. the outcomes of these situations. I mean, bro, I've, I've seen mosques and synagogues that have tight security. They have security in the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen that. Um, I guess I'm, I'm curious to know if there was any security in the church. There was. So in one of the th uh, footage where they have the assailant on the ground and they're holding him by the back of the head, there was a person that had security on his back holding him down. So I don't know if he was already on the premises. I don't know if he quickly got there, if he was a, like an attendee of the church who was just happened to be in your, I don't know how he got there, how, but it seemed like he was there pretty quickly. And it seemed that he was holding the assailant down. So it, you know, when, if you watch the video back, Marmati probably is thinking that this is just a regular person of his congregation coming up to him. I'm not going to put words in his mouth. I would love to ask him about it re, uh, after he's, you know, out and uh, willing to talk about it. But um, it looked like that it was just a random person coming up to him and he was probably trying to like praise him, whatever he was allowing him. He had his head down. He wasn't paying attention who was coming up and he only yeah. realized when it was too late. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Oh, dang. But you know what's dang, amazing? Man. You know what's amazing? Every This is what's going more viral than the actual attack. He held his cross out as the only sign of defense that he had as like a shield instead of a weapon. Because look, in that situation, what would you do? You know, they say if you pull, if someone pulls a gun on you, you charge them. If someone pulls a knife on you, you run, right? That's the old Jimmy Hoffer mm -hmm. saying from the Irishman. So in that situation, he didn't run. And you're, you're 
too close of a distance to do anything. And realistically, if you think you're going to fight a man with a knife without any formal training, you're delusional. Like, you think you think you're Rocky Balboa or whatever. Like, you're crazy. You're not. It's not going to happen, especially when it's a split decision reaction. His split decision reaction, his instincts told him to stick the cross out. Mm. And the knife didn't open. Wow. Man. That, man. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, bro. I get chills, bro. I get chills every time I, I think about that, you know? I get, yeah. I get constant chills thinking about that. I mean, I, mean I, I feel like moving forward, obviously, I think there should be security at every church. I think there should be security at every house of God, you know? I mean, even Scientologists got security. Yeah. I mean, we need, we need security at, at all, uh, all the churches. And, you know, oh, well, one thing I do want to reiterate, and uh, I know some people are just joining in right now. If you're just joining mm -hmm. in right now, uh, we are talking about the incident that involved uh, Bishop uh, Marmati Emmanuel. He was uh, attacked, uh, you know, around 48 hours ago at a, uh, at a, um, church uh ceremony at uh at around seven o'clock in australia uh the uh attacker the terrorist tried to kill the bishop bishop thank god the weapon did not go uh was not useful in this situation and he was not able to carry out his plan bishop was saved we're talking about this right now they revealed that this young man who is i think he's under 16 years old he claimed that he did it because uh, the bishop has made some comments about Prophet Muhammad. Uh, apparently, this kid is Muslim, and you know this has been spun to be an attack between Islam and Christianity. Which brings me to what I said in the beginning. Uh, I don't think this is Christianity versus Islam, Islam versus Christianity. I don't think this is religion versus religion. Mm -hmm. I think this is sick, demonic kid. Mm -hmm. But you know. You know Sorry, Paul, just a thought before I lose it. You know what I think would be good? Out of, out of gesture of good faith, the Muslim sect and religion should reach out and put a public statement out as a collective and say, hey, we stand with our Christian brothers. We don't condone this action. The problem is then where Christians are able to uh, make assumptions. You see, this is why this is happening. They're not saying anything against it, so they must be for it. If they put a formal statement out, then it would be like, okay, the Abrahamic religions are, there's some type of unity. Unfortunately, there always has to be some type of tragic event before there's any unity, like 9-11. Unfortunately, COVID wasn't it. We thought, I thought, many people thought COVID was going to be something that unified us again. It did, and it pulled us apart. But when you look at stuff like this, and you see this tragic event happens, there's stories and people in Australia were, were DMing me, telling me that they lived in Australia, they were there, they saw it. They said the, the Syriac churches in Australia and that region of the world and the Chaldean churches were all showing love and support to Marmati. I didn't see it, but they were telling me about it. And so you look at another situation that's a tragic event. Now you see the, all the divided sects of the Assyrian nation are coming together to show support for this. Even the Assyrian church of the East put a statement out in support of Marmati and condemning the actions of rad this, this, this radical individual. So if Muslims put, stuck their hand out across the aisle and said, hey, we don't condone this, we, we condemn this, it would put such a different narrative and, and push unity versus more divisiveness because the stories instantly right after were all of the Assyrians in Fairfield, Australia, were going to run and burn down the mosques that this kid practiced at right? Someone's saying the Muslim community did do that. Well, clearly they didn't do a good enough job because we didn't hear about it. All we're hearing about is, is the, I got to stop reading comments and talking at the same time because I'm getting 15 different types of answers. Yeah. And I, I mean, there's, yeah, there's a, we'll, 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 we'll uh, finish your thought. Then we'll get to some of these comments. All I'm saying is if they blow up the narrative that the Muslim community stands with the Christian community in times of crisis like this, we would no longer have to worry about mainstream media twisting the narrative and making us fight each other head to head. That's my point. Yeah. And then also like, uh, I just did some Googling and uh, there have been some news outlets that have mentioned that, uh, there are some uh, Islamic groups that are denouncing the attack, obviously. And like, I'm just reading one. It's like the Australian. It's from an Australian news outlet. I just DM'd it to you. Uh, they were basically talking about, uh, you 
know, they're holding a prayer for uh, the bishop and these attacks are gruesome and sick. So, um, yeah, there's, there, there obviously is, um, I, I will tell you this, I haven't seen a whole lot of news outlets talk about the Islam, uh, uh, Muslims responding to yeah, this. I know, I, I, I haven't really seen any, I just did a Google search and then I found some, so there, I'm sure there are some. My thoughts, bro, are that the, the news loves division, bro. Mm. They love fighting. They love this shit. So it's like, like, why would they try to promote those headlines? I mean, I've had, I've had my Muslim friends call me and check in on me and ask me if I'm okay mm -hmm. and mention this to me. You know, I mean, I am not seeing a whole lot of articles about this. Um, I guess the next few days we will find out. I mean, I did find one that I just DM'd you. So uh, I, yeah, I think, I think more, well, I would say this. A lot more information is going to get revealed. I'm sure this kid's being interrogated right now. Some information about him is going to get released. I and don't think so, unfortunately, because he's a minor. So there's only so much that they could release about him. That's that's why they're saying we don't know anything right now. I'll tell you this, bro. Whether he's a minor or not, man, is this kid held a knife and trying to kill somebody? I'm sure that they got to – I don't know if it's called extraditing. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know these things. Is extraditing a thing? I Let's Google it. I think extradition means you take him from one country to another, right? Oh, so that's something else. All right. I, I might be pulling that out of my ass. I, I got an engineering degree. I don't have a... The action of extraditing a person accused or convicted of a crime, they fought for... Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We got to get a lawyer on this on this thing. Anyways. Yeah. They should charge him bro, as an adult for sure. Yeah. They, they should 100% charge him as an adult. But the one thing I want to say is that the news loves division. You know, yeah. already in the news, it's Islam versus Judaism. That's what's going on in the news with Israel and Palestine, right? Yeah. Even though there's Palestinian mm -hmm. Christians, you know, there's been, I, I, I don't see a whole lot of talk about it. I mean, they do talk about mosques being, you know, obviously, you know, Ramadan just happened. Lent is uh, just uh, uh, wrapped up a couple of weeks ago as well. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of Muslims seeking refuge in churches. Churches have been bombed. Mosques have been bombed. Uh, Israel, uh, you know, there's just an, another attack on Israel from Iran. So it's like, yeah. you know, the, obviously there's like countries are attacking each other. You know, there was a, another bombing in Lebanon that just happened. So in, in the Middle East right now, the God. primary conversation is Islam versus Judaism, Judaism versus Islam. Now Christianity has found its way into this mix as well. So the news is like, I think they're like, oh man, yo, let's start this triangle and let's start picking sides mm -hmm. where I believe it's like, yeah, we should put Jews and Christians together and against the Muslims. Yeah. You know, obviously it's like, you know, these, the media outlets, obviously a lot of them are very biased. So we know what side that they're leaning towards. So I don't know how this is going to spin. I don't know how this is going to play out. I'm honestly very worried. I'm very worried worried about how this is going to play out yeah i'm very worried about the uh the energy that this has created in the community like you know people are obviously like very angry very and emotional. i'm just i'm just i'm just praying that it's like hey we need to hold each other's hands even stronger you know i don't think there's ever going to be an end i don't know if there's an end anytime soon to what's going on in the middle east right now with the the zionist agenda against the palestinian people i don't know how that's going to uh, play out. I mean, God, uh, I, I pray for them every day. So I think this added issue is now creating even more of a conversation and more division. So I'm just worried about that. Yeah. Well, it, it's a tough situation, but let me ask you this. So I had someone reach out to me who was very close to Mar Maddie, and she asked me if it would be a good idea to hold a vigil. And in my mind, I thought, like, he's not dead, you know? So emotions are extremely high organizing people in public is probably not the best when emotions are high and everyone is, you know, at a state of, of irritation and frustration where people can get into more arguments, fights, you're bringing people who have different beliefs about this guy together. And, and that could cause more things. You have personally, you know, and I'm sorry if I overstepped my bounds on this, but you, you've mentioned publicly, you've had death threats on you for even just doing com basic comedy. Right. Yeah. For, 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 I, I should just mention this for, 
for mentioning that I am Chaldean Assyrian mm. and uh, acknowledging my Assyrian identity. Uh, I had, uh, sorry, someone called me. I was, I've been gotten threats from uh, someone who is Chaldean and he was saying, stop saying Chaldeans are Assyrians. I'm going to come to a show. I'm going to find you at your end of your show, watch your back, you know, and the guy DM me from his business account. So now I'm getting this like home renovations account. Oh, that guy? I see him all the time. Sending me threats. And I'm like, it's weird getting a threat from somebody whose profile icon is a renovated kitchen. Yeah, he's going to redecorate your kitchen in blood, son. So I mean this with, so the reason why I brought that up, right? And the reason why I brought up the gathering and the reason why, I, you know, it ties into this situation perfectly is because with you being a public figure and you're performing in front of people in a way, Marmaddy is performing in front of people, not performing, maybe not, not servicing in front preaching. of people, preaching. And so not just that, bro, he went to Gaza a few months back and he went to these war zones. He went to these places that he's putting himself in harm's way because he's serving the community, serving people. He believes what he's doing is right. You're doing your own services in your own way. You get these threats when tensions are high and people's emotions are high, how do you feel personally when you know now there might be a potential target on you? Does that deter you from doing what you're doing? Are you on high alert? Does that make you move different or do you keep doing what you're doing at the same level that you love it at? Because now I'm questioning if Mar Maddie's messaging will be different now because of what happened. I don't know. I don't know. That's a great, great question. Um, I, I will tell you this. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with religious debates. I mean, you know, I've seen a lot of videos of uh, Madamadi and uh, Madamadi Emmanuel, the bishop, and he's, you know, uh, breaking down Islam, breaking down Judaism, breaking down Christianity, saying how, you know, and he has a clear opinion about religious text, giving his interpretation of it. Also, Muslims use his videos and then respond back to it and say, well, I think this. Yeah. And, they're, and what are they doing? They're giving their interpretation of the text. Oh, the word to be means this. This is what they meant by the, by the verb be. Well, I think the verb be means this. And it's like these conversations, I feel eventually led to somebody wanting to kill the bishop, right? So it's like, I don't agree with that reaction. Obviously this kid is sick and he's demonic and, you know, God, uh, you know, I, I pray that he gets uh, what God has intended for him to, to get in this life. Or, and, and God heals this man of the, the demons and exercises these demons that are in this, this kid's mind. And, you know, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I'll tell you this, bro. I, I feel like the top headlines is that Marmati prayed for the guy, prayed for his attacker, prayed for his attacker over his head. He hasn't gave, gave any public statements, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. um, I would be interested to see how he reacts to this and how it changes. My opinion is I don't think it's going to change anything. I think, if anything, this has made his message even stronger. If he, I he, think sticks, it's made his if he sticks stronger. to if he sticks to his initial messaging, it does. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Basically, it, it's a simple message. It's a message of Christianity. We believe in God. We believe Jesus Christ is a pathway to God. Jesus but Christ I wonder, is the Son of God. I wonder if, if his delivery, I should say, is going to change now. I wonder if his tonality is going to change now, or if it stays the same. So that's something interesting that we can see in, in the next following months that will develop as time goes on, obviously. But um, in terms of the Assyrian community, I think we can touch on this and wrap up. Um, the Assyrian community is outraged, absolutely outraged from all across the world. Yeah. I mean, Patrick David made a post about it. Um, a lot of people were talking about this. The Patrick David also, he, he made a post about it the day that it happened. And then he spoke about it with Vincent Oshana um, on the PBD podcast this morning. And, you know, it just got a ton of coverage. Someone emailed me uh, an article from the Jerusalem Post with my interview in it. So like, like you said, this just went worldwide. But like the Assyrian community is absolutely outraged about it. I think it was 5,000 Assyrians showed up in protest and uh, rioting 
in Australia, you know, and we haven't seen anything like that in the West. In, in turn, I keep saying it West. Australia is technically the West. I'm saying, I mean, like America. I got you. Right? You. And America and Canada. We haven't seen anything crazy like that. But I hope it stays that way because, you know, they, they say the reason why Syrians don't have a homeland is because we always turn the other cheek. We never stood and fought. My Jordanian side, who is Catholic, um, they even said that their homeland was overrun with with infiltrators because they listened to the teachings of Jesus Christ. But I go, listen, man, you're here for maybe 80 years if you're lucky on this earth, right? But you have an eternity in the afterlife mm -hmm. with Christ. So if you make that decision to pick up a sword and fight versus to turn the other cheek because you think that 80 years is more so worth it to you than eternity think of infinity times infinity and then you, we can't even wrap our mind around it if you think 80 years is better you're the worst investor i've ever met in my entire life i don't want to do any business with you this is where ego meets the soul and i think a lot of this is now you know it's a lot of ego it's a lot of high tension it, 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 i don't want to say it's low iq but i think people who are miseducated and, and and don't stop and think and rationalize the outcomes of their decision making and the consequences that they'll face if they take up arms not only in this life but your soul will be tainted for the rest of eternity mm. Mm. so I, my message to the assyrian people is calm down and let's wait to hear what this guy has to say after he mark Matty Emanuel has to say after he gets out of the hospital and makes a statement. And then we can go from Claire, there. Player, that's, uh, uh, I 100% I uh, love what you said, man. I 100% agree. Um, I, 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 we are very angry and people do want to retaliate. And I think what we should be doing is saying, thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. All this anger that we have should actually be gratitude. And this is not turning the other cheek, weak reaction. This is actually a strong reaction. It actually takes more strength to take your anger and turn it into gratitude than to take your anger and turn it into a reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to reference Andrew Tate again. Andrew Tate was basically saying like, oh, Christians are weak. That's why you guys are a failed religion. You guys are weak. No, bro. This right here, everything that should be going on. I mean, Christina just said this. This anger should be activism. Yes, 100%. And, uh, uh, you know, before we wrap up, Christina, uh, if you want to join, just uh, invite yourself up here. Uh, just come give us some closing thoughts. Uh, I know that she's tapped in and had some information as well. But, you know, that we are not weak. This is not weakness. This is actually a lot of strength turning our anger into gratitude into saying thank you god into prayer into saying we pray for uh the people who saved the bishop the people who got hurt and cut praying for them the people who put themselves at risk to save the bishop the bishop is saved yes 100 percent. we should chill out we should stop saying oh and and talking bad about other religions we should stop saying islam is this we should stop that stop stop propagating saying that equating terrorism with islam because clearly religion has been hijacked. Islam was hijacked by this attack. And this kid is not a representative of Islam at all. I think we should be grateful right now, pray for the bishop, hear what he has to say, and see what he wants us to do. Mm. We should see what he wants us to do. So that's what I think we should uh, uh, definitely do, man. And basically I just reiterated what you said, but I just gave a little bit more emphasis. I like it. On certain words. Right on. Is Christina going to join? Oh, no. I'm going to invite her up real quick. Cool. Um, yeah, buddy. Christina, we just sent you an invite. Come, come up, player. I think Christina, I guess you don't know, she's, uh, she was just in Iraq. Christina is the homie. She did our uh, event a few weeks ago uh, talking about Chaldeans and Assyrians and Syriacs and mandaeans and how we should all come together by the way i never met a mandaean i didn't even know what they were until uh aluki and shemas had that podcast that they did 
Yeah, bro. That was crazy. I did. Apparently, you, you can't be a Mandaean unless you're you're born into it. It's also considered a religion and a culture. It's like being Jewish in a way. You know yeah, what I mean? Like you can be a Jewish. Yeah. Yeah, man. And Dan's are like Soho House memberships. <laughs> I'm like, man, what do I got to do to get in? All right. Uh, she's unable to join. Okay. Um, no well, what, what, what should we do, player? Should, should we bring up like one person to say a few things or? Well, is, any, just is, call it? is there anyone requesting to join? I can't. The chat's not there for me anymore. I'm just oh. looking at my beautiful face. So it's up to you. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, look, player, I think we covered a lot of ground. Yeah, I think we uh, 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 we said what we needed to say. Someone said, "Paul is right. Anger will not help us. Bring someone on." Um, next time, someone someone asked a question. They said, "This is a wake up call to everyone." Okay, thank you. That's a good question. Um, that's a good statement, actually. Um, yeah, man, maybe we should, uh, uh, we should call it, bro. Um, okay. Here, y'all, listen, if you just joined, what we're going to do is Emmanuel is going to post this on his Instagram. I mean, on his YouTube. I'm going to post this on my Instagram. Watch it. Uh, and, bro, Emmanuel, I feel like we should talk at least once a week, man. We should oh, go yeah. like once a week and just jam and just Absolutely. talk. Absolutely. If you got time tomorrow for the people listening – we can have a you and I and a special guest on who might have an opposing view from us slightly, which might make the conversation interesting a bit more. Um, if you have the time, we can organize that, or maybe sometime later this week, we can talk talk about it. Yeah, man, let's definitely do it. And then, um, bro, there's so many interesting comments here. Uh, and thank you guys for Paul Aaliyah. You are Chaldean, not a Syrian, from Chaldean Nation. Um, Thank you, Chaldean Nation, for uh, uh, chiming in. Do um, you have anything on that, Emmanuel? No, I'm going to bite my tongue. Cool. Uh, listen, y'all, thank you guys so much for coming through. Um, we will do this again soon. Uh, if I'm going to leave you guys with anything, please say a prayer tonight and give gratitude to God. Say thank you, God, for saving the bishop. And continue to pray for peace. This is, is, you take your anger, take all your displaced anger and put that into prayer. Put that into prayer. Let's hear what the bishop has to say. We're going to pray for uh, Bishop uh, Matamati. Mm -hmm. And I want to pray for all of you. I'm praying for all of our people and all the people of the world, everybody who needs it, the people in Philistine, the... Uh, all the hostages, I'm praying for everybody. And, you know, God, God will, will, evil will always lose. I'll tell you that. Evil will always lose, even though it may not seem like it. Yeah. Amen. I mean, and I will come to Australia soon, I promise. I'm going to do a show soon. And uh, I love y'all. Uh, Emmanuel, player, good, good kicking with you, bro. You and always good talking to you, bro. I'm looking forward to the next conversation. Yes, player. Let's do it. Cool. All right, Paul. You have a good night. See you, bro. Peace.